Salmon Act of Nine. It's a really great turnout. Organize the South. That's my mantra. It's what I say over and over again. Because I believe that for the labor movement and for worker justice, it is organize the South or die. Everyone agrees that the labor movement's at a crossroads. Union busting is rampant. Workers are earning less and less, and CEOs are getting richer and richer. There is no question that labor is facing a crisis. But there is a question about what the future holds for our movement and for workers. I think if you want a glimpse of what that future might be, just look at the South. Everybody's already said it. This is the place where we have the lowest wages, the most poverty. This is where companies come to exploit their workers. This is the birthplace of the Tea Party and right to work for less. Folks in New York or California may wonder why they should care about the South. Well, unfortunately, the problems of the South are quickly becoming the problems mm -hmm. of the nation. Mm -hmm. Our low wages drive down wages everywhere. Our Southern Tea Party conservatives block legislation in Congress. And because of ALEC, our union busting laws are spreading around the country to states like Wisconsin, Michigan, and Indiana. What happens here in the South affects the nation. And that effect will only increase, as Chris said, as the South grows in population and political influence. So what does that mean? the labor movement? What does it mean for workers? Is our future one of continued exploitation, hostile laws, even greater inequality? I don't think so. I don't think that's our future. I think the future for the labor movement and for workers in this country is a bright one. Because again, look at the South. If you look closely here, you see strong coalitions between people of faith, civil rights community, and labor. We see a new solidarity developing here between black, white, and brown workers. And we see innovative, non-traditional organizing that you're going to hear much more about later. If you look at the South, you see the fastest growing, most diverse movement for economic justice in this country. Look at the Moral Monday protests spreading around the country. Look at the fast food workers' strike sweeping the region. Workers in the South have had enough. We want change. <coughs> we want hope. And we want to believe that things can be different. And they can be. If unions make investments in Southern states, if we grow this movement here, we can change the South, and by doing so, we can bring economic justice to every corner of this nation. Thankfully, national labor leaders are starting to realize that. <laughs> they understand that we can't let the low-wage, anti-worker culture of the South take over <clears throat> the country. That's why last fall, at the National AFL-CIO Convention, <clears throat> unions passed a resolution calling for a Southern organizing strategy. And several unions are already blazing the way, including UAW. Because of increased organizing here, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, South Carolina, and Virginia were the states last year with the highest growth in union membership. Yeah, it's still low when you look at that chart, but folks, that's significant for those southern states to be the one with the highest growth. Brothers and sisters, change is possible, but we need your help. We saw last week in that close UAW election that even when the company remains neutral, conservative politicians and corporate interests will do whatever they can to malign unions and interfere in the campaign. Workers who want to organize need the support of the community in a visible public way. They need messages of hope, not fear. That's why all of us need to stand up for workers' right to organize, and all of us need to stand 
stand up and challenge the anti-union rhetoric of the other side. If we want to stop the growing inequality we have in this country, we need to quit treating union like it's a four-letter word. And folks, I am not just talking about conservatives. Too many progressives avoid talking about unions. Lots of folks now are talking about poverty, about inequality, about problems in our public schools, but they aren't talking about the underlying cause of these problems, which is that families don't have enough income. If we want to end poverty, let workers organize and bargain for a living wage. If we want to have students, if we want students to succeed in the classroom, let their parents be able to work one job and earn enough to support their families. We need to spread the word that a union card is the best anti-poverty program around. Union workers earn on average 200 more dollars a week than non-union workers. That's 10,000 more dollars a year. Let's do something about inequality. Let's make sure workers can organize and bargain for their fair share. If we do that, we can change the balance of power, not just in our economy, but also in our democracy. Research shows that for every percentage decline in union density, there is a corresponding 0.4% decline in voter participation. So if union density in 2000 equaled what it was in 1954, there would have been an additional 17 million votes cast in the 2000 presidential election. Think about that. Because I can guarantee you that Art Pope and the Koch brothers have thought about that. Unions give workers power. They give workers power not only in the workplace, but also at the ballot box and in the policy debate. And that is a very scary prospect for corporate America. Just look. If you pull up the slide, John. If you look at the North Carolina Chamber of Commerce's annual report for last year, I'll tell you what it said. The one thing the North Carolina Chamber highlighted, saying that big business was up against this year, the one thing they talked about was labor's effort to organize the South. They cited this article from The Hill that says labor will embark on an expansive organizing campaign in America's union scarce South that, if successful, could bring about serious political upheaval. <laughs> serious <laughs> political right. upheaval. That's mighty scary stuff for the 1% who engineered this inequality. But oh, how exciting it is for workers. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for some political upheaval. <laughs> if you're ready for political change, If you want to take on poverty and inequality where it is the worst in the nation, let's organize the South. Help us do that. Help us tonight by sharing your ideas in the question and answer. Help us by taking the actions on this yellow handout. Help us by standing up for unions. With your help, brothers and sisters, we can not only create a new South, we can create a new labor movement. A movement that is not limited by the walls of a workplace or the inadequacies of our labor law. A movement for all workers that includes temps, white collar professionals, college athletes, and the baristas at their local coffee shop. Whether you work in a factory or a farm, a McDonald's or a Walmart, an office or a university, this is the movement for you. So join us. Join us, and together we will organize the South and we will change the nation.
Are y'all going to help us do that? Yeah.